Well, I just want to start uh, by thanking you both, Kenny and Claire, for taking the time to chat with us at the Christian Beat, all about your uh, project coming out, Upon the Storm. Well, thank you. Thank you so much yeah. for having us here. We're yeah. excited. Yeah, for sure. So I just want to start, I think, by kind of how long you've had the vision for this project and maybe how it's changed over the course of that time as it's come to fruition. Well, we started with the vision for this project not soon, not too long after we released our EP, Are You Weary? Mm -hmm. And when we started working on it, we originally had in mind a traditional church worship service and the order of service that it shapes and in a traditional church worship service it if, if you look at all the different aspects of the pieces it actually puts together the story of the gospel starting with who God is who we are in light of him and confessing our sin and then remembering what Christ has done so we had that in mind as we were writing towards this album and then at the same time, the songs that we were writing tended to, to give it their own shape, if you will. So we started with the, the story of the gospel and the traditional worship service as the, as the basis for our writing. But then we have a, song, a psalm song, which does fit in the theme, a song of lament um, that fit in this theme. And then we have a song specifically for taking communion um, it's called bread of the world and mercy broken and uh, a song remembering the contents of the apostles creed and the basic tenets of our faith um, and so it was kind of a both and as we were writing the songs helped them take the shape and then but we also started with that as our inspiration and then even so once we had the songs written um, we started kind of playing them in our concerts um, getting a feel for how people respond to them. And, and that often meant we went back and rewrote what we had written before, <laughs> or changed the melody, you know, things like that. And then we brought it to our producer, Mitch, who is wonderful. And, and even there in the production situation where he's like, okay, now we're, we're codifying this into a, a solid unit. There's some other changes that need to be made. And, and then the other musicians who helped us on the album brought in their own sauce and, and it, you know, it, it's it's really cool how um, it's a collective effort. It's not just, you know, I write a song and I have them do it for me, but it's like we're all going to come together and create something that's unique. So even like our our live concerts when we play together, we're going to play the same songs, but they're actually going to sound different than they do on the album, and we love that. Like you get both worlds, you get the studio world and you get the live world, and that's yeah, kind of how we operate. Absolutely. And and in speaking of kind of that duality on this project, you also have originals, you have some some hymns and classics that you've reworked as well. Do you want to talk through kind of your thought process there and maybe how you how you select uh, where you, you know, write new and where you kind of pull in uh, some of the hymns and things? Yeah, I think um, I'll let Claire talk a little bit about this, too. But uh, <laughs> it's, we, we have this passion to try to remind the church of where we've been, um, that we're not just trying to write something completely new, but we actually have a history of faith. And we want to we want to sing the same songs that that great cloud of witnesses in the book of Hebrews has sung before. Um, and so when we found um, hymns that we thought, man, the lyrics here hit real hard and these are helpful because nobody's writing like this. We go with that. We need to work on that and see if we can't not just put a new melody to it, but we usually rewrite them into completely new songs just to give it a, make sure it feels natural to our to our era. Um, but then even things like um, the Psalm 23 song that I'll let Claire talk about, um, that was just organic. Like, this is something we need. Um, the Apostles' Creed song, we just felt like our church would confess the Apostles' Creed before taking the Lord's Supper. And we thought, man, it would be really great to have a song where we could actually sing that and not that that hasn't been done before but but in our style you know yeah. um so it's just that kind of thing where um we're always writing and so there's a whole bunch of songs that have been written that aren't on this album and so as we write and we go okay this feels helpful uh, we want to find songs that come alongside the church and and help that way and so a lot of times it's we've written this whole 
co constellation of songs, these seem to be the ones that might be helpful. So it wasn't just like, oh, we need a rewritten hymn there, or we need, you know, this this original, it's just kind of more organic in that way. Mm -hmm. How else would you? I will say in the songwriting process, a lot of times I'm inspired by reading some of these hymns as they are and then feeling like I want to express this musically and how how can we best do that mm -hmm. um, and then and or as I'm reading the scriptures or um, perhaps like reading a devotional book or something and there's quotes or scriptures that stick out I want to write on that theme and like I said as we put the album together we realized that all these themes all fit together <laughs> And uh, it's yeah. beautiful. And so um, the inspiration comes from a lot of different places. So sometimes we've written hymns. Sometimes it's a song that we've written ourselves. Um, sometimes it's a mixture of the two. There's a song mm -hmm. of confession that we had been wanting to write. And it just wasn't working out. So I had many drafts of a particular song of confession of sin. And then I came across an old hymn and a hymn book that we have from the 1800s. We have other hymn books, but this particular one is my favorite and I keep finding myself coming back to it. But in the book, there's a, a song called All Our Sinful Words and Ways. The only attribution I can find to it is a guy named F.H. No, Ella. I get it's confused. two initials. All we have. <laughs> I've tried time and time again to remember. Leonard Whoever, Fitz Wallace. I don't, I don't know. Excuse, we don't know. The, the initial guy yeah. or girl, I don't know, but, uh, and then realized what we had been writing fit really well with what was there. So it was very much a co-writing process of, <laughs> <laughs> with someone I did not know, um, but it, it turned into the song, Forgive Us Lord, and uh, we're, we're, we're excited about that. And like I said, it's just kind of how each one has its own story of how it came to be. And I think too, um, like as far as the project as a whole, like mm -hmm. the first project, Are You Weary? Um, we were wanting, you know, we had, if we had come from COVID, like it, and it was tied back to some other like things that we had dealt with in the past. Just wanted to come alongside people who were suffering and remind them of truth um, because it's, it can, it's, easy, it's easy to forget when you're suffering uh, those truths. Um, this one, we all, we wanted to, Okay, we've we've come alongside you in your suffering. Now let's look at the wonder of God's mercy and the fact that He loves to show mercy, and we need it. But but He He's glorious in these ways, and we don't always understand what He's doing, but He's glorious. And so we wanted to kind of turn it in that direction. So there was a, there was a thematic attempt at that that kind of led us to make some song selections that we made as well. For sure. And I was actually going to ask um, with kind of the theme and the overarching message of this project, why Upon the Storm kind of was the title for you, why that title track stood out to you, and, and the, why why that was such that like point that pulled it all together. Actually, that happened in the studio. We originally thought that it, the, the album was going to have a different title. But as we were putting the songs together and listening to all the songs uh, thematically, lyrically, and also sonically, we felt like God Moves Upon the Storm very much came to the top to help g give that overarching theme of, yes, we are recognizing that there is suffering in this world. It is hard, but our Lord is above that. And so with the album, we truly want to help encourage eyes to look above our situation and what we see and just to look, look to him. And so that's how that title track bubbled to the top. Yeah, it ended up being the, the one, the, the song that lyrically brought together the themes of all the other songs as well. And it's funny because like in the writing, we felt like have mercy on us was was going to be the song that did that and so we had a different title for our album i think even in our fundraising we had a different title for the album <laughs> and, uh, yeah in the production listening and hearing go oh okay uh this needs to be something different that's really interesting um how you know you can make those changes further into the project but obviously you've had kind of that vision the whole time so it's always interesting how those can change around I, i'm also curious 
if there's a track right now that you feel most connected to kind of like in your current season or one that you keep going back to at this point? You want to start? Yeah. So um, for me, actually, the, the track, Am I a Soldier of the Cross? Or Am I a Soldier, I think is what we called it. Um, it's, it's a rewrite of, of an old hymn called Am I a Soldier of the Cross, um, which kind of comes across more victorious and triumphant. And, um, and, and in, in writing it, we kind of brought it back to a more introspective, like, am I a soldier of the cross? And, and, then, and then adding, um, our producer Mitch helped us actually add the, the chorus, uh, low I go. So it's like, okay, um, if I am, then I need to do this humbly. And, and there's something sonically about that track to me lately, like hearing the violin and, and the, the deep, um, the bass drum and, and things like that that just kind of I don't know pull at me so that one that one's just sonically and thematically the one that's kind of been on my mind more lately there's a song that I wrote based on Psalm 23 I started it back in the spring of 2022 when we went okay. home <laughs> with our music and which was a little bit of a scary transition, if you will, Terrifying. not knowing yeah. how things, I was putting it lightly, are going to work out. <laughs> and I felt, found myself continually coming back to the promises of Psalm 23. It kind of felt like in the midst of a busy day, coming back to the word, being able to quickly read a psalm and go on with my day. And uh, in one of those particular instances, I remember going to my room, just opening up my Bible, trying to pray. I'm dealing, like I said, with anxiety and stress of how we're going to do all these things. And I remember getting to the end of Psalm 23 and seeing, surely his goodness and mercy will follow me. And I started to sing that and put a melody to it then and there and went on with my day. I had other things to do. And uh, then I noticed my kids were singing from their rooms the same chorus. And I just thought, man, I need this. But my kids, they, they sing this. They need this too. And the fact of the matter is we all need to be, again, singing the promises of Scripture and what God says. And so at that point, I decided, all right, we're going to put Psalm 23, not that it's not been done, but in our words, um, to, to music. Mm -hmm. And that is, the Lord has used that to encourage my heart time and time again. Every time we sing it, um, it's there's something about just being able to, to proclaim and remember the truth of what God says, knowing that we can trust him. Mm -hmm. And so since then, that has been one of my favorite songs to sing. And most certainly, I think, is my, my favorite song on the record, if I dare. Well, yeah, if I dare say. <laughs> I love them all in different ways. <laughs> I was going to say, favorite is dangerous there. <laughs> Pick a child. I, I like it. No, I, I mean, yeah. At the moment, yeah. at yeah. the moment, it's one I find myself clinging to most. For sure, for sure. And you had mentioned um, sometimes how you rework different songs and things after playing them live and kind of seeing interactions to to the music and things. I'm curious how that kind of also potentially like changes the song meaning for you sometimes and being able to hear those stories and see that interaction and how that kind of um, affects you and then how you interact with the song as well. Mm -hmm. um, I will say, I mean, just in, in hearing you talk about that, there is, it is such a gift to not only be in a congregation singing and hearing those around, mm -hmm. um, but sometimes to be on a stage and hearing those with us sing and fill the room with their voices and again proclaiming the truths of scripture together is just so very beautiful and encouraging um and <laughs> we it's actually it's funny you mentioned the rewriting process we i remember specifically introducing a song uh, to a church that we served out in colorado and I didn't realize it, but the church started to sing their, sing that song and sing that version. And we came back to Colorado this year and we had a slightly different version. <laughs> 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 and uh, uh, 
but they were encouraging to us to say we we love both and I've been on the receiving end of that sometimes sometimes that can be a little hard you know you get used to one thing and it changes um but again I feel like that's it's part of the writing process and so it's sweet to see how even if we've changed something just a smidge that it still has hopefully served those who listened in the first place um and we've seen we've tended so far to get good and kind responses from that <laughs> but yeah so it's, it's, well, yeah what's neat too is like sometimes you know we'll write songs and i guess in the back of my mind i'm like is a congregation gonna sing this like is this really and and then to hear a room filled with voices you know um in in our in our concerts we like to have the lyrics up just so people can see what what we're singing Mm -hmm. and, and if they feel led to sing along, there are portions of the concert where we'll ask people to sing, but a lot of times we just want the words to be there so they can think as they, as they hear. Um, but there have been times in concerts where we haven't asked them to sing a song because we thought maybe this isn't so congregational, and the room's full of voices, and it's just beautiful. Like, going, okay, you know, they can do this. This is a good thing. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's funny. Um, I think when, when you create the art, you have an idea of what you think may happen with it. And then when it gets out to other people, um, it's different and it's, it's always better. It's always better than what you think it's going to be. Um, at least that's in my experience. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. It's always interesting. Some of those, you, you don't know how it's going to be received. So you kind of, you have some idea of how you received it but you're you're waiting to see how, how others do as well so yeah well, through our experience right and, yeah and for sure that so far yeah. <laughs> absolutely absolutely um well i know that we're getting close and i've really enjoyed getting here to hear about your music but i do want to give you just one opportunity um before we close just to share a little bit about your prayer, your expectation for how this project is going to impact the listeners who get to hear it and kind of what, you, what you're praying behind this project. First and foremost, we are praying that the Lord would use it to encourage hearts towards faith in Christ and what Christ has done. Um, that wherever they are, if they're suffering now or if they're suffering later, that um, it would be hopefully an avenue to help guide eyes and hearts to looking to the Lord above the circumstance of whatever it is that they're going to. And, and even in our prayers, it's okay, Lord, this, this is what we, we think is best. This is what we want, but ultimately God use this however you will to, to help encourage and strengthen not only your church, but also to bring others to you that don't know Christ um, to see Christ through this project and to have the gospel presented through song in different ways. And one of our, our big desires, um, even with churches we have relationships with as we travel and play, is just to come alongside them and, and not, not to speak down to them, but to come alongside and say, hey, friend, um, this is hard, but we want to help you look, look up and and that's really our prayer. We want to be an encouragement, an equipper, you know, Lord willing. Um, you know, we'd love to see churches use this music. Um, that's why we write it. Um, but but we want to encourage. Awesome. Well, I just want to thank you both again for taking the time. I've really enjoyed getting to hear more of uh, your heart uh, behind the music in this project. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having us. It's been an encouragement. Thank you. Oh, absolutely.